On the last video, we installed Octane for Unreal Engine 5, so we could use their path tracer within Unreal Engine. On this video, we're gonna be optimizing this scene, featuring the gonk droid from the last video, and turning it into this, simply by tweaking settings within Octane. So as we did on the last video, we're gonna activate Octane. So we're gonna to go to the Octane menu and load Octane. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Octane Render Target Actor, which you find in the Outliner. Whenever you start a project using Octane, it should create one automatically for you. If it doesn't, you just go to the Octane menu and you select Create Render Target. So I'm gonna show you what the scene looks like when it's first loaded. So I'll make sure that I select which camera I want to uh, show. So I'm gonna use my Camera Actor 1, which is the wide shot, the Vista, and then click Render. And that's what it looks like. Uh, not particularly inspiring. I mean, it's still a path tracer. It's still tracing all the light paths in the scene. But what it doesn't do is pick up on a few of the uh, elements from Unreal and it's not carrying them through. Mainly uh, volumetric cloud. So that's the clouds in the sky on the Unreal Engine side. And it also isn't taking into account the uh, sun and sky sphere. As well as that, there is no fog. We're going to take the Unreal Engine scene and we're gonna create an HDRI, which is gonna be a static image, so you, your clouds won't move, unfortunately. You can still uh, create the clouds that you want within Unreal, within the volumetric cloud actor, and you can have it carry over the way it looks, the way you want it. So for me, that's enough in this case. The way to do it, so we're gonna mute all the Megascans. We're gonna mute my gonk droid. We mute the landscape, because we don't need that. Uh, and I also have a plane as well. Now, because it's a Tatooine, it has two suns. Octane automatically takes the sun uh, or your main directional light and uses that within the Octane scene. So if I don't want to have three suns, then I have to actually mute the one in the sun and sky actor, which is quite simply done by selecting sun sky, type in sun on the directional light. And I've set the disc color to black. So that's already done. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. So how do you turn that into an HDRI? You want to create a scene capture cube. So I'm just gonna to go to all classes, scene capture cube, add that to your scene right there, anywhere will do. But first we need to create a cube render target, which we're gonna do in our content browser. So right click in the content browser and go to textures and select cube render target. And there it is, I'm just gonna call it Tatooine. Now in the scene capture cube, in the outliner, make sure you drag the texture target across here, like so, and that links them up. So now if we open it, we get this. And you notice it's flickering weirdly. We'll fix that in a second. I'm gonna make the size 1024 so that it's got a bit more quality than 256 resolution. The flickering is caused by the scene capture cube because the scene capture cube is currently set to capture every frame and capture on movement. We don't need any of that. It's already captured the scene. So now that we, dis we deselected those and now we get a nice HDRI, HDRI image. But we can't use this just yet. We need to actually save this as a texture cube, which is different to a cube render target, <laughs> which is done very simply by right clicking on Tatooine and say, create static texture. And there it is. Now we have Tatooine texture. Before we move on, I'm gonna save all. So let's turn our uh, gonk droid back on <laughs> and let's turn on our Mega scans and our landscape. And now we're ready to add the HDRI. So go to 
in your Octane render tag actor environment. I don't know why this is a thing, but this first step will change this, the whole look of this scene. It's gonna look so much nicer when all we do is we go from daylight environment here to no node, makes everything black, and then turn back on daylight environment. Now all of a sudden we've got ourselves a, a nicer looking scene. You get that warmth from the sun just by turning it off and on again. So go figure, but you're welcome. Now we're going to add the HDRI texture. So you scroll down in the environment section of the render target and go to sky texture right here and add an RGB image to the sky texture. We're gonna drop that down. So that, you can see the sky's now gone black. So that's because we're gonna now add in the HDRI. I'm gonna drag in Tatooine texture. But now our sky is in the scene and that might have been enough, but for some reason, these HDRIs come in oriented incorrectly. If you take a look at the Unreal scene, the sky should be much brighter where those suns are. So I'm pretty certain it just needs rotating. So scrolling down a bit more, we're gonna to go to projection, which is underneath the sky texture area. There we go. So now all we should need to do is rotate the Y. There you go, there's the nice big bright area of the sky. So that's our sky, that's a really important step. Next, we can add our volume fog, which is again done in the environment tab here. So you just, right at the bottom of the environment tab, you've got medium, which says no node. So you just sec uh, you can select a volume medium or a scattering medium. I tend to choose scattering. And it goes black because the density starts out just crazy, crazy huge. It's at 100. Sweet spot for me is 0 0.02 or five, depending. So once we type that in, we don't get anything because we also need to increase the radius. So what essentially you're telling it is the thickness, which is the density, and then how large of an area that's gonna affect. And, and currently the medium radius is at one, which is, Nothing, so we're gonna change that to 200. And it's gone a bit darker, which is fine because the scattering is currently black. So we need to, I'll probably put that at about middle. Oh, and now we're, we're, something's happening. So let's now change the volume step length, which should help us make things more visible as we ramp that up. We'll change that to a thousand. Now it's really a question of adjusting your settings between volume step length and medium radius. So medium radius may now be too high. So 100, looking better, try 50, there we go. So now it's got that haze, that heat haze I was talking about in the background and you can continue to mess with this for you know ever. It's very, very fun. So now we've dealt with the fog and the HDRI, which now brings across those elements that weren't working before. We can start to mess with the kernel settings, which are essentially some of the most important settings within the Octane plugin. I'm gonna run through what I think are some of the most important ones for you to learn. You can play around with a lot of this. I'm not gonna to go too detailed and too in-depth here, but some of this is mega important. First and foremost, you've got the kernel itself, and currently it's set to direct lighting kernel, which is essentially draft mode, I'm gonna say. I set that to path tracing, which is excellent, and PMC, which you may want to use if you've got a scene with a lot of, say, glass, refractions, and caustics. So path tracing, is what we're gonna select. First thing you'll come across in the kernel is the amount of samples that you're gonna give. So that's the amount of rays it's gonna project out into the scene. The more, the better. It's not always necessary to have that many. And there are other settings that can make your renders speed up a bit. Some of those are, for instance, the different depths, diffuse, specular, and scatter. I'm gonna set these to a fairly low number for the moment, because it's a very simple scene. There's one light source, the sun, not actually two, and that light source doesn't need that many bounces and there's not that much in terms of specular in this scene either. Filter size, so a low number increases the sharpness but increases jaggies. Uh, so I set two as a happy medium. 
GI clamp is the first setting that might help solve some Firefly problems if you have any. Uh, we certainly do in this scene. It's set to a really high number to start with, so we're going to actually set that all the way back down to one and see if that helps. And to be fair, that has actually cleared up, as I said, all of those Fireflies. So really useful to know. There's a setting called AI Light, which I find quite useful if you're working with media planes or dark scenes, but I haven't found any reason to not have it checked on. So I always check it on just in case. Now, if you want to speed up renders more dramatically, there is a setting called adaptive sampling. If you check that on, what that does is it essentially turns off pixels that have reached a certain level of noise. So if you have a noise setting, the noise threshold here, I'll set mine to 0 0.08. Just a number that I've come up with having used this software a bit. That's a decent level for noise for me. And that may differ for you. So anything that reaches 0 0.08 of noise will get turned off and the renderer will then focus its attention on pixels that are noisier. The, in the imager, there's a hot pixel removal. So if the GI clamp didn't remove them all, have a mess around with the hot pixel removal. Lower numbers will remove more hot pixels, those fireflies we saw. But again, you may have a loss of quality if you push it too far. And finally, post-processing, I like to enable that. Whoa, that's a bit much. I like to, I'm going to turn the glare off. There we go. But I do like a bit of bloom because it really, you can see how it picks the suns out. It makes them look a bit more realistic, of course. And if you are interested in glare like that, you might want to go for an anamorphic look so you can set the glare amount to one and just rotate that so that it's horizontal. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not too keen for this project. And I think that just about does it. Here's the final render and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.